Helen of Troy is the face which launched a thousand ships, and this is the face that lost a thousand jobs. Well, 375 of them anyway. But while we knew that that unhinged rant wasn't just Frost's fault, she got cheered on by people on the side or clapping along like seals. I actually want to talk about something so much more important than Red Dead Online. Sexism in gaming. Yeah! We now know that G4 TV was dead from the moment of its creation because of the reasons behind why it was made in the first place, and this meant that The Rot was not just the odd person on screen, but it went down to the very core of the company. That's why after its closure we've had its staff just completely losing their minds on the internet. Whether it be unhinged rants about the evil bogeyman that hide under his bed, or Adam Sesliff turning his Twitter page into a modern Warfare 2 lobby. Because while he started off just wishing his colleagues the best for the future, he very quickly descended into insulting their moms and saying their daughters were She-Hulk before he totally lost it and started threatening to punch people in the face. Stay off the coke, kids. And then one of their video editors decided to go after Melanie Mack of all people. And I can only apologize for the quality of this because the guy has, uh, yeah, he's privated his Twitter account. Big strong man over here, really confident behind his keyboard, but can't handle people telling him the truth. Because of all the posts, this was the weirdest one, with Melanie Mack being far nicer than I would have been and quite frankly, far more than they deserved. Because she was just saying that it was sad because some of the people there would have been good people who lost their jobs, or because a few people did something they shouldn't have been. But Joshua couldn't handle that and said this, Keep our names out of your mouth. None of us want your well wishes or your pity. You're an idiot if you think a single person can tank a multi-million dollar business. And what Frost did was courageous and well-intentioned, unlike the venom you spout behind your good Kristen veneer. There's so many problems with that, it's actually incredible. Because the end is the best bit, spout behind your Christian veneer. Wait, you can't shame somebody for beliefs or principles which you don't hold yourself. It's the same people who preach for censorship, and yet when it turns on them, suddenly, oh, where are the free speech warriors now? One of the interesting things about trying to hold moral high ground is you actually have to be respected by people. You work for G4, you failed at that one already. Because what Frost did was courageous and well-intentioned. Or was it? When she was on screen, she was engaging in customer service. She was trying to entertain an audience. And yet instead, she was attacking them. And she was actually getting cheered on by people on the side, whether it be shouting along or clapping like a lunatic. Talk to him, Frost! It was so bad, even the people behind the cameras were shouting and screaming along at it. It was actually a really strange vision. This didn't seem like entertainment or a script, but what this was was a mask off moment. It was their disdain and hate actually being exposed because they had the best thing that they could have. A load of people in chat which they could see the reactions of, but also they couldn't defend themselves. They're not in the room. So the power differential between streamer and chat was massive. They had an entire group of people that they hated and despised waiting there, watching there as a captivated audience purely for them to crap on and attack and they reveled in it. it. The entire circumstance is sick. It's like a child ripping legs off an insect or crushing ants. These were people that didn't care at all about the people on the other side of the screen, and they wanted them to know it. I'm not as bangable as the previous host. It's not courageous or well-intentioned to do that to people, to crap on people, especially when you want them to give you money. When they are your audience, they are the people you are meant to entertain, Dance clown dance is the only thing you should be thinking with your audience. Give the people what they want. And instead, G4 was hiring people that couldn't stand the very people that they were meant to be working for. That's how you end up with Adam Sessler threatening to punch people in the face. Or Ryan here throwing slurs around, desperately trying to put the blame onto people and form them into a group. Because these are people who always want to be a victim, but a victim requires an oppressor, and yet there's a strange relationship between the two. Their minds have made this twisted reality, where they think this group is simultaneously powerful enough to be their oppressor, but also incredibly inferior to them with massive amounts of problems. Yes, yeah, somehow Ryan here wants to appear the victim, while also saying that everyone else is beneath him. Although it is funny that he brings up bigoted cod lobbies from 2011, when that's exactly what Adam Sessler created. But my question has always been, how on earth did that speech ever go out on air? Who saw it, and why did nobody stop it? And it turns out that G4 TV was dead from the moment it was created, and we've got that information from Frosk, that her sexism and gaming content was approved by all the executive showrunners in X-Play. When she was originally hired and cast, G4TV made the internal statement that they were going to be an ideological company 
that was built to fix the past. Now, G4 TV was a successful business in the past. That's why it came back, because it used to be successful. And yet, for some reason, because it's in the past, it was just horrible and wrong. Despite the fact that that's what everyone wanted, and what they wanted the new company to be. No, we can't be that, we can't be that, because that actually appealed to our target demographic. They weren't going to care about anything as base and needless as merit or talent. Oh no, what we want are people who ideologically align with our beliefs. Because remember, gamers are just all random slurs which he's going to make up with, and he doesn't care about any of their beliefs about how the internet is too soft, or it being a COD lobby. He doesn't care about anything actually related to gaming. Don't you understand? Things have moved on, times have changed, and we need to change an entire industry because, uh, I, I don't like it anymore. That's why Joshua thinks this was so brave and courageous, because she was going against the entire gaming industry. And she was fully supported in fixing those problems of the past until she destroyed the entire company. But it's too late at that point, because they went into this hiring people that hated their own audience. The rot went through the entire company. And so even if, as Melanie said, there were a few good people within the company, most of the company was hired specifically not to be. And it was done deliberately. And so when you realize you need to change, even if there are a few good people that could actually point you in the right direction, go, okay, we need to get back to the past. You've now hired a load of people which will fight against it. Stop you making the changes you need to to survive. And then that means your company has no other option, either to just fire most of the staff and start again from scratch, basically, which you'll have to do with a destroyed reputation, or die and fire everybody. They went for the latter. Honestly, I can't blame them. And that's a lesson so many companies need to learn, that you need to gatekeep who you hire, be because a lot of people have ideas that will destroy any company because they hate the very audience they are meant to serve. There is a constant need to be a victim, but a victim requires an oppressor, and a lot of what they believe as an oppressor is the very demographic they were trying to serve. And this is the same not just in gaming, but in entertainment as well. It's got to be difficult making superhero shows when the people that watch superhero shows are the very ones that you don't like. Isn't it She-Hulk? So if there's one area of a company that you want to gatekeep, it needs to be your HR department, because they come up with the policies that rule the company. They come up with the ideological principles from which everything else grows. They will spread people throughout your company. They will agitate, cause problems, and attack your very customer base. And nowadays, it can be so difficult to actually get rid of people that you end up just shuttering the entire company instead. And so they can come out and go, you know, the network, it was just not financially sustainable. The idea was actually for fans to be entertained, inspired, and connect with gaming content. But we all know that that was never true. The intent was to build it so that they could fix the past. Just like so many other IPs have been done. We need to change it. We need to fix it for a modern era, a modern audience. Because everything that happened in the past, despite the fact that that was successful and everyone liked it, it was wrong, because it doesn't fit with our ideas, our ideologies, and that's what we build the future on, despite the horrific consequences which come about from that. So G4 TV is a lesson for the future. If you don't want to go bankrupt, you should be very careful about who you hire. You should treat your customers with respect, and you should give the customer what they want, because while at G4 TV, there may well have been some good people out there, some people that just wanted to provide great entertainment and did respect to the audience. Those people seem to have been silent when it mattered, and that's something that everyone can learn from. Oh sure, you kept quiet because you wanted to keep your job. Well, how's that working out for you now? Because maybe those people were in the minority, or maybe they weren't, but we sure know who the loudest people were. The loudest people definitely made sure that their abusive nature was out in the public for everyone to see, that their rampant hatred of the people that they were supposed to entertain was fully on display for everybody. And the worst part of it is, as good old Joshua here says, they think they're doing good. They think it's brave and well-intentioned, because they think they're giving you what you deserve. That whole shouting and ringing match, that segment, was built upon the idea of we are going to abuse people that we can't stand, and we're going to revel in the fact that they can do nothing back. But you forgot that you needed them, that the company was nothing without them. And so they did the only thing they could. They walked away, and along with it, so did your career. And quite frankly, it just seems like poetic justice to me. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Uh, bye bye. I'm not as bangable as the previous host. Ooh.